Hello, all you truth seekers. All right, I know there are a lot more new people, so let me just say we are called the truth seekers, and we walk together seeking truth. We are not meant to walk this journey alone, so that is why I do what I do, and I am coming to you every week in an email, but if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, don't forget to click the little bell. You'll be um, notified of all the other videos that I have, which earlier this week prepped this one. It was on St. Joseph the Worker's Feast Day, and I was telling people about my predominant fault. I've been under massive attack, and I want to tell all of you thank you so much for giving me your feedback in YouTube, which is the easiest way. Please just comment in the YouTube video because it's all in one place instead of emails and things like that, that I have to go search and sort and all of that jazz. But I have taken notes and I am praying on what to talk to you about next because there's so much. People want to talk about fear. They want to hear about my journey and my relationship with God. How did I build it? Other people want to talk about deliverance. Other people want to talk about discernment. And so I really felt called to talk about something that I should have taken care of early in my journey. And I didn't until recently with these massive attacks and this massive stuff that has been going on that called me into studying more about discerning spirits, making sure that I had all the weapons that I needed to, to fight the fight and not fall into sin. It is so important not to sin, everyone. I'm telling you, the ramifications on your soul are detrimental. And if you don't know your predominant sin, that is just giving Satan an open doorway. So Satan watches you. All of his little minions are watching you all day, all night, looking at your behavior patterns. They know you. They're smarter than you. They know you more than you know yourself, and they are going to go after your predominant fault, your root sin. So if you don't know what that is, you've already like, you know, he's here and you're here. I mean, the fight is going to be tough to try to get up there and duke it out with him. Okay, what is a predominant fault? What's a root sin? Well, it's you know, you can look at the seven deadly sins and you can kind of look and say, oh, that one's kind of me and that one's kind of me. But there's kind of, you know, kind of, there are like three predominant sins that you should be looking at. Pride, vanity, and sensuality. Okay, what are these really? Because those are pretty big words. Pride, vanity, and sensuality. I'm telling you, I had them all in spades. There's no question. Let's take pride. Pride is an overwhelming sense of self-purpose, self-worth. I did this. I got this job. I climbed this corporate ladder. I got all this stuff because I did it myself. I studied hard in college. I do this. I, do. I don't need God. It's all me. I worked hard. That's pride. Vanity. Caring too much about what other people think of you. That was my entire life. Oh my gosh, do you like me? I was this awful, awful people pleaser. I just tried to be what people liked. I tried to do what people would accept. I tried to diet myself to a body that the world wanted. I put my value in people and what the world thought of me. I had no idea of my identity as a child of God. None. So my whole life was in fear of what people thought of me. From a physical perspective, from a career perspective, from all, from a moral perspective, even though a lot of the times I kind of just shove that away because I just kept partying, drinking, doing drugs, and just numbed myself to the fact that, am I really acting like this? And I kept my mind so busy that I never reflected on who I was or what I did. So I didn't have that opportunity to sit there and feel shameful. I just was like, hey, this is who I am. I'm a truck driving, partying, potty mouth chick. You know, truck driving. I wasn't driving a truck. Truck driving, swearing, potty mouth person. And, you know, yeah, I drink a lot and I'm raw and I'm rash. And, you know, that's who I am. That's what people love about me. I'm the life of the party. Hmm. And then let's go to sensuality. 
and you might immediately think of sex. Yeah. Well, that's part of it, right? It's pleasure. Just being addicted to pleasure. And that was me. I was addicted to overeating because I had those endorphins come by, by overeating. Then, I, of course, I would puke it up because I was bulimic for a while. And then, let's see, over drinking, uh, pot. You all know about my 20-plus year addiction to marijuana. I mean, I did everything I could to, to take the edge off, to eliminate that stress in my life and the fear of what people thought of me. And it was always more drugs, more drugs, more changing my state of being. And, of course, I watched pornography, I had self-gratification, and then I just watched hours of meaningless TV. But that's not just what sensuality is. Sensuality goes into you like to be comfortable. You don't like to go be a risk taker or put yourself out there. You know, no, 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 I just, I, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I don't want to take that new job or I don't want to follow what I feel God is calling me to because I'm afraid. I'm just going to kind of sit in this rut and be this till I die. Comfort, not getting out of your comfort zone. And then there's also taking the easy way out. And that's why St. Joseph, the worker day, was when I really had to look at, oh my gosh, my predominant sin, and I figured this out earlier, but I had to share what it was, minus sensuality. All of these things that I have battled with in my life and that I've had some graces to overcome, praise be to God. My addiction to marijuana, my overeating is still a bit of a battle. There are days, but nothing, I don't, I am not bulimic, so I don't have that cross to bear anymore, again, by the grace of God. Um, let's see. Over drinking, I am nothing like I used to be, but I'll have that extra two glasses that I shouldn't. And I'm at, oh, I always never, I never put this on mute. I forget that. Sorry, everyone. So I have those extra two glasses and I'm thinking, why? I wake up the next day. I'm sluggish. I feel regret. I really do because I want to be the best I can be and have self-control over this body. So then I get into my laziness. I mean, my whole life, I just skated by. I didn't care about school. If I got a C, I was cool with that. I was like a solid C student. <laughs> I had no overachieving bone anywhere. I was like, I'm just going to do what I have to do to get by. I, that's exactly how I went through college. That's exactly how I went through my career. Believe it or not, even though I climbed the corporate ladder, the only gumption and pride that I had was to jump from job to job and keep climbing it until I reached that executive level. But then I did as little as I possibly could. I didn't have that workaholic bone in my body. I just, you know, did enough to keep my job. My team worked a ton. Love you all if you're happening to watch this. They rock. They rocked it. But I didn't work like that. I didn't have that work ethic. So I just kind of skated by. And I look at that in my exercise life, right? Okay, well, I would rather not eat than exercise because that's like effort. I don't really want to clean the house or do any yard work. And so I think about St. Joseph, the worker, and all of the things that that blessed man had to go through from providing for his family in terms of a job and not being able to provide for his family when he fleed to Egypt, right? couldn't feed Mary and Jesus. Can you imagine the, the pain that he felt, the regret, the shame? So sensuality is my predominant fault. And I will have to fight every single day with Satan and his minions around all of those things that I just mentioned in the sensuality category. Now I mentioned I had the vanity and I have the, I had the pride. But praise be to God, I don't have the, I don't, I know I cannot do anything without God. And with God, in my weakness, he is my strength. I can do anything with him. Now, that's still a struggle. Sometimes I try to do things on my own, but I'm not filled with pride. And then vanity. Let's go to the vanity side of the house. I now live for an audience of one. In the beginning of my Catholic speaking in 2018, I was still attached to what people thought of me. I couldn't share all this stuff with you. There was no way because I would be so concerned about what you would think about me. But now it's all about God. That's my audience of one. Lord, I am going to share everything that you have done in my life because people need to know 
that living with you and through your graces is the only way to change, the only way to have transformation, the only way to forgive like you, to love like you, to understand the faith and to live it, to not be those fake Catholics like the fake news that you hear. And I'm, I'm kind of taking that from a Father Becker who I saw on YouTube the other day. And he's like, let's not be fake Catholics like there's fake news. Let's be real Catholics and let's live by the commandments and love each other and stay true to what Jesus wants us to do. But you can only do that because I tried it myself. Again, that was back in my pride days. I tried to change myself. I kept falling and falling and kept dragging myself to confession. So what is your predominant fault? I would ask, and I've learned this through an exorcist priest, exorcist priest, pray to Mary, our lady of sorrows. Ask her to show you your predominant fault because you need to know all of the ways that Satan's going to continue to attack you. And then you need to start learning more about discerning spirits. And I also want to say this, I have been studying St. Ignatius spirituality and discerning spirits. And there's rules like one through 14, but the first rule is totally different than other rules. And this is why I want to call this out specifically right now. First of all, every single person that is watching this and every single person on this planet has a unique relationship with God or without God, right? You have your own journey. You have your own experiences in life. You are uniquely created. There's not another one like you. Even if you're an identical twin, you've got some differences. You in and of yourself are you. So one thing I want to reiterate, which I'm sure you all know in your heart, but you cannot compare your religious experiences, your relationship with God with anyone else. Why I am doing this is to walk with you and share with you some of the things that I struggled with, maybe to help you through your struggles, but also to share some of the things that were triumphs that I was like, oh my gosh, ding, ding, ding. I wish I knew that four years ago in this seven year journey. So that's why I'm bringing up this predominant fault because the sooner you know the areas that you're going to be tempted and you're going to be attacked, the better off you're gonna be. Let's go back to rule number one in the St. Ignatius rules. And boy, he's brilliant. And all the rules intertwine. You don't just stick in one or stick in the other with the exception of rule number one. That's why I want to call this out. If you are in a state of perpetual sin, perpetual mortal sin, you can Google what mortal sin is. There's actually, um, I might try to find that and put it in the email. There's a website that actually goes through and lists out some mortal sins, but it really has to be something that is grave matter. That's big, a big, big, big against God move that you do willingly. You know you're doing it, but you're going to do it anyway. And in some cases, I mean, I seriously look at my addiction to marijuana as a mortal sin. I do. I look at being a drunkard as a mortal sin because my ability to reason and to make smart decisions, and those were those drugs and things in my life had me do even worse mortal sins and act in ways that I wouldn't normally act if I wasn't sober, okay? So I'm just saying, I'm looking at drunkenness and addicting addictions to drugs and, and addiction to pornography, obviously those are like, that's a blatant mortal sin, but, um, okay, let me, I'm not going to define mortal sin much more. You can look that up. You can go to the catechism of the Catholic church and I'll try to find that grid and put it in the email now that I'm thinking about it as I'm recording this. Okay. If you're in mortal sin and you're perpetually falling into it, do not fall into the trap of Oh, well, if I feel peace, that's God's will because it's actually opposite in the first rule. Rules two through 14 are different. Rule one is unique because in rule one, you're still falling into sin over and over and over again. And Satan is going to be the one who tells you 
and gives you that peace. Oh, you want to smoke that pot and you want to sleep with that woman, even though you're married, or you just go ahead and watch that porn. You need that stress relief because you have those, you know, those feelings and things associated with that sin. And so Satan gives you that peace. It's God and the good spirits that prick and poke you. It's that shame the next day after you slept with that person, or I shouldn't really be doing this drug, but I'm going to, no, I shouldn't. It's that second guessing, that, that poking at you and making you not feel comfortable about making that decision. That's the good spirit. So let's just think about that. While you are in mortal sin, know that <laughs> Satan's going to keep you in that trap as long as he can. So that's not God. That's not this peace that people talk about when you're praying or when you're about ready to do something because Satan's going to be like, yeah, man, think about how good that's going to feel, right? I know your mind is just going to those places and just know that that is not God. God's going to poke and prick you and make you feel guilty either after or before or during. And that is him saying, no, that's not how you're supposed to act. And that's not my will. Sin opens the doors for Satan to rule your life and suck you into hell. This life matters. How you live this life matters. And I want you to take your life seriously because that's why the road is wide and many are on it to destruction because it's easy. It's easy to not, you know, live according to God's rules. I'll just do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, right? If it feels good, do it. Who cares? Life is short. Well, no, like eternity is long, long. Okay. And the road is narrow and hard. It's not so easy sometimes, but with the grace from God, he gives you that grace to get through and not be seduced and not be pulled into hell. But that narrow gate, few are on it. But think about the beautiful life after this short little stint on earth, right? Is that toke on that pot or that extra 17 drinks or that pornography or that sleeping with that woman? going to do anything really it's going to be a fleeting moment of pleasure and stop it with the pride i mean the pride and humility that was a long one for me but i know there are some people who are darn right narcissistic and it's hard to get through them and that is you know everything is because of god not because of you you're here because of god you should be thanking god the minute you wake up and you take that breath and then vanity this world means nothing I could care less about this world. I just want to show the world what God can do through everything and sharing everything that he's done for me. Because this life can be peaceful and loving and happiness. There's such freedom in walking away from some of my former behavior. Oh my gosh. And I'm so much happier. It's this joy, God-given joy that I think everyone is searching for. That's my tagline. Find something more. In God, everyone's trying to find that something more. Oh, I'll be happy when I get this or when I lose weight or when I get married or, you know, when I have a baby or, you know, no, you can be happy right now and not just happy, but joy filled. There's a reason that word is floating around all over the place during Christmas because it comes from Jesus Christ, who is God, the Holy Trinity, and frankly, The sacramental graces of the Catholic Church only help us become more virtuous, filled with God, through the Eucharist, through reconciliation, when we can go to him and just apologize and fall on our knees and he cleans us up, dusts us off like a good old daddy and pats us on our butt and says, okay, go on your way, my faithful servant. Find your predominant fault. Go look that stuff up. And pray on it. Pray to Our Lady of Sorrows and ask her to show you. In case you're like me, back in the early part of my journey, I might not have known which one it was. I would have debated between the vanity and the sensuality. But now I'm at a different place and you're going to have to continue to look. But that your predominant fault is going to be something that you need to know so you can fight the fight. 
Alrighty, everyone. Thank you to all the new truth seekers. I hope you stick around. Give me a couple of weeks and I will be praying on all of the other topics because I know that there's there's just so much to share. And um, I'm just trying to pray on the way in which to share it. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> but this one was big because this is one that I wish I took some time to understand years ago. Alrighty, everyone. Let's pray on our predominant fault and figure out what it is. And then look at the ways in which we can see Satan poking at our weaknesses, trying to get through that predominant fault into us to help us fall into sin and tempt us to fall into sin, lure us and seduce us into sin. Sin is a big deal. We have the strength in God to walk away from it. Maybe we could talk about that when we see him poking through those doors, right? And poking into those areas that we're weak in. What do we do? Maybe we'll talk about that next week. Put some comments in the YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see the other videos that I put out there. And God bless you all. Let's look for our predominant sin. Have a blessed and inspired week. Take care, truth seekers.